you watched Inception. Read theories to understand Interstellar, maybe also Crag Dark on Netflix. Maybe you're the guy who got trigonometry in the first go and chemistry equations were your thing. And yet, if you say you've understood hashtag 3T cricket in the first go, you're lying. You really are. Live cricket resumed in South Africa after a while and when the organizers sat down to say which format should we play, they said, well, let's do gully cricket and do what every gully cricket game does, make random rules. This is how three team cricket is played. Three teams of eight players each face each other. One inning of 12 overs, which the batting side plays in two halves of six overs each. One bowler bowls a maximum of three overs. A change of ball happens every 12 overs and if seven batsmen are out, there's also the rule of last man standing. Yaar, phir to 30 yard circle ke bahar jane ka direct do runs, one tip one hand aur Sharma ji ke ghar jane ka out bhi rakh lete. Maybe it'll make a lot of sense once we start and just play. <laughs> yes, A.B. De Villiers in a Cricket South Africa promotional video. Make of that what you have to. Three teams get together, A.B. De Villiers' is Eagles, Kingfisher led by Reza Hendricks and Temba Bavuma leading the Kites. But how do these three teams decide who bats first? Well, uska bhi ilaj hai. They drew lots, so the captain who drew out a ball which said one would bat first and likewise for second and third. Out came King Fisher to bat first. Yaniman Malan blasted through, scoring 31 of 16. They ended with a healthy score of 56 for two. Up next were A.B. De Villiers' Eagles. When they came out to bat, they were in some sort of initial trouble scoring just 16 runs off the first two overs, losing one wicket. And that is when A.B. De Villiers walked out to bat after full 172 days of not playing any competitive cricket. Here was A.B. De Villiers. But he was scratchy. He scored 11 runs off just seven balls because all the action was happening at the other end. Aidan Markram was staying off. He scored 47 of just 23 balls as the Eagles top scored in the first half. But the good thing for the Eagles was that both Aidan Markram and A.B. De Villiers were not out and they would bat in the second half of their innings as well. Kites came into bat three and put in a decent run, putting on the board 58 runs for the loss of one wicket. So at the end of the first phase with each team batting six overs each, this is how the standings were. A.B. De Villiers' Eagles were first, Temba Bavuma's Kites were second and Reza Hendricks' Kingfishers third. Eagles top scored in the first half, which meant they would bat first in the second half. And this is where A.B. De Villiers came out and did slam bang, do your thing. Yes, A.B. De Villiers, who was scratchy in the first half, scoring just 11 of 7 balls, came out feeling like it was Shinnaswamy and he was wearing red. Because of the next 17 balls, he scored 50, ending with 61 of just 24 balls. Eagles ending their 12 overs with a colossal 160 runs on the board. Into bat next were the Kites who started slow but then Pretorius upped the ante in Tabrez Shamsi's over and it seemed like they had some hope of gunning down their 160 but they failed to. They ended their innings with just 138 runs on the board. Putting Eagles now firmly in place for at least a silver. The Kingfishers knew their target very well. They needed 105 of 6 overs to win gold and 83 of 6 overs to win silver. But sadly, they couldn't get to either of those landmarks as they ended up with bronze with the least score in the game. And with that, we had the winners of the Solidarity Cup. A.B. De Villiers' Eagles winning the gold. Timba Bavuma Skite with silver and Reza Hendrix's Kingfishers with the bronze. If you went through the game going, but then, hang on a minute, how did this happen? But what about that rule? More than once? Well, welcome to the club, man. All of us were just that. But the cause for which this game was played was really noble. It was to help and support all the cricketers who were affected by the lockdown. And we can just hope that this Solidarity Cup raised enough funds to fund all of them and improve their livelihoods. Also, before you leave, I just have to give you one more rule. For every no ball, they gave two runs in the Solidarity Cup and because they had less fielders, they could ask for more fielders from the other team which was sitting in the dugout. If that is not gully cricket, I don't know what is.